Imagine students had individualized education plans tailored using their genetic data. What kinds of families would have access to this genetically sensitive school system? And what would it mean for educational equity? Our world is full of technological advancements that were previously unimaginable. My name is Daphne Marchenko, and I'm interested in one area that's made particularly rapid progress, the biosocial sciences. So what are the biosocial sciences? The biosocial sciences are in the common ground between biology and the social sciences. In other words, it's no longer a question of nature versus nurture. It's nature and nurture. The biosocial sciences encompass a wide spectrum of fields, including epigenetics, neuroscience, and behavioral genetics. What I study is how these fields are making their way into education and education research. But the biosocial sciences are ripe for debate, and rightly so. They raise important ethical, social, legal, and policy questions about the research and its intended and unintended consequences. In fact, there is a long and heavy history of using scientific ideologies to justify and explain differences between people and societies. This ugly history has produced horrific atrocities, like the Holocaust and the involuntary sterilization of black, brown, and poor women. Gifted education, IQ testing, the SAT, these are examples of policies and practices in education that were born out of eugenic thinking. In their creation, they helped identify and lend opportunities to white privilege. The biosocial sciences have the potential to impact all facets of education and education research in ways that are both positive and negative. For example, how might genetics research on intelligence impact teacher perceptions of their students, especially in the United States context, where there are stark racial and socioeconomic disparities in student achievement outcomes? Or how might smart schools comprised of complex sensory networks impact student and teacher privacy? It's questions like these that make some excited and others downright nauseous when it comes to the biosocial sciences. And these polarized reactions are not new. That's because the use of biological explanations to justify human behavior and social phenomena also is not new. Today in education, the biosocial sciences are shifting how we think about and understand the student, the teacher, and what it means to educate. Our views of ourselves as learners and educators are more malleable than they once were. The biosocial sciences are transforming conversations about stress in high-stakes education environments. They're influencing our views on mindfulness and on how to enhance education systems. The field is changing the ways in which we build schools and how teachers think about their students and how best to teach them. And yet, amidst all this transformation, we ought to remind ourselves of the age-old threats of racism, classism, sexism, and biological determinism. Proactive steps will need to be taken to avoid repeating past injustices. So what can we do? Where do we start? Well, it starts with a conversation. As the biosocial sciences analyze everyday human life and behavior, they have the potential to profoundly impact how individuals and societies operate. The education research community must foster interdisciplinary conversations that avoid obscuring ethical uncertainties and re-solidifying socio-cultural assumptions. Creating constructive avenues for conversation, ones that keep equity in mind, will mean talking with each other rather than apart. A failure to do so would be a disservice to our students, especially those who need us most. If you'd like to learn more about the biosocial sciences and what they're doing in education, please check out my special issue in Research and Education.